Next up will be Mikhail from the Technical University of Denmark, and uh, he will be talking about uh, topic model robustness to automatic speech recognition errors in podcast transcripts. So, Mikhail, the, the stage is yours. Yes, uh, I'm just going to try and share my screen here. Let me know if you can see it. Should be able to see some slides here, I believe. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, so my name is uh, Mikhail Jordan. Uh, I am a PhD student at uh, the Technical University of Denmark, um, but this was actually done in my previous employment, which was also at DTU, um, this research. But uh, anyways, it was done in collaboration with two Danish companies also. Uh, one is called Alvinia, and Alvinia is a smaller um, startup that has done some very uh, promising uh, ASR technology uh, in Danish in particular. Um, and it was also done in collaboration with Podimo, which is a podcast uh, service provider for users in Denmark. Um, and um, I'm very happy to be able to present the research today uh, that we've done together, um, which is called, it's a bit of a long title, but uh, Topic Modeling Robustness to Automatic Speech Recognition Errors in uh, Podcast Transcripts. And um, just to give sort of a, a little teaser, uh, the research is, the goal of the research was to uh, investigate what level of ASR technology we actually, how high of quality of ASR technology do we actually need to get meaningful and relatively high quality of uh, topic distributions um, uh, on transcript acquired through ASR uh, in, in podcasts. Um, and so, just a bit of background and motivation has already been said many times today, and I think we're all aware of is that the you know we have this increasingly large amount of podcasts available to use us um, and uh, one of the key questions for service providers uh, for podcast providers is uh, how do we automatically recommend content to users that is meaningful to them and that they want to listen to. Um, and the key word here is of course, automatically, because as the content pool grows, it's hard to do uh, manual uh, recommendations, for example. Um, and especially for a language like Danish, which is not particularly large, 5.5 uh, million uh, native speakers, I believe, uh, how do we do this in a low resource language where technology is, not as mature as it is, for example, in English. Um, and what are the levels of maturity that we actually require in English, uh, sorry, in Danish, in order to be able to uh, to, to do so? Um, and when we're talking uh, maturity uh, in in technology, it's in particular with regards to NLP uh, technology, for example. Um, so. One of the, the, the issues that we face here is also this lack of metadata for, for podcasts that might not be there um, if content providers do not uh, uh, create it themselves. And then, yeah, as I mentioned, that, that technology is not mature. Um, oh, sorry, here we go, sorry. Um, and so there's, of course, a, a large number of factors that affect recommendations, but the, things that we, the thing that we wanted to target here was this, uh, uh, the, the recommendation factor, which is like the topic of the podcast, uh, as Rosie previously mentioned, that this is like a, one of the primary things that users look for in the new uh, in the new content they're looking for is the topic of the podcast. So that is the focus of what we're doing here. Um, so yeah, we we basically investigate the maturity level uh, required from automatic speech recognition for good topic modeling. And um, the way we do this is that we obtain some baseline transcripts from uh, from uh, podcast audio, and then we artificially inject noise into these uh, baseline transcripts uh, at an increasing rate, and then we see how this affects the topic distributions that we obtain from the transcripts. Um, so in order to do this, we basically needed uh, there was three primary areas that we had to address for our experiment, which we'll explain in a in a minute. Um, but basically, the first one is uh, we needed to obtain some baseline transcripts, which basically is the best obtainable transcripts that we can get um, on the, for this audio. Um, the second thing we needed was uh, some ways to inject transcription errors into our baseline transcripts. So basically a way of artificially increasing the errors in our uh, transcripts. 
And then the third thing we needed is uh, create, we needed to create some topic models um, in order to obtain these topic distributions on the transcripts. And, um, and then finally, we needed to have some evaluation method of the topic distribution, topic distributions. So basically, obtaining the topic distributions in themselves is not enough on the on the transcripts. We also need to see are these actually close to the true topic of the podcast. Um, and so, first, the 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 way we obtain these baseline transcripts, right? Uh, ideally, what we would have wanted was a true script, for example, from the podcast, the content creator. But in the data pool that we have in Danish um, uh, that we had available, we did not have enough baseline transcripts uh, that was actually provided by the content producers. So instead, what we did is that we use uh, Alvinia's dense speech speech recognition system um, to to obtain these baseline transcripts. And I won't go too much into detail with that, but the idea is basically that the baseline transcripts um, is the output uh, from Dan speeches, the Dan speech technology, um, and so we treat these as as the baseline, the best obtainable uh, transcripts. Um, so then the second part is this about how do we actually get to simulate transcription errors uh, in a good way, so we can in, in sort of inject them into the these baseline transcripts and make them more and more uh, erroneous. And uh, one very basic way, which quite obvious is just to use some uniform random kind of noise where we basically just replace uh, a word with any word. Um, so yeah, I should say that the way we do this is that we select some beta value here, which basically ranges from zero to one, and that is the frequency at which we corrupt a word um, in our transcript, uh, in these baseline transcripts. But yeah, so just to go back, sorry, is that we have these the first and basic method is the uniform random noise method, where we just randomly sample some Danish word from some big corpus and then replace a word in the baseline transcript with this randomly sampled word. But the more uh, interesting approach is this, where we sort of have modeled noise from typical uh, errors made in a, an ASR system. Um, and then we try to model the types of noise that are made by ASR. And then we, we, we try to increase the rate of these ASR errors occurring in a script. Um, and the way we did this is basically we had, uh, so we have some uh, audio books where we have accompanying uh, scripts, like, and we know that these are the correct scripts for the audio books and we align. Um, and then what we do is we use the same technology, the dance speech technology to create uh, transcripts from the audio, from the audio books. And then we align these two transcripts with each other and see where errors occur, okay? And then basically what we get is some conditional distribution which says, uh, given some specific word, uh, in this case, W, uh, what is the likelihood that the error that is made is W bar? Um, so in this case, you can see here, we have the word known sin in Danish, and you have some error candidates here, which is what we've seen in this large corpus of uh, audiobooks. And you can see the typical errors that are made for known sin here and the probability of them occurring. So what happens when we corrupt these transcripts is basically we have some better value. And whenever we choose uh, a word has to be corrupted, we make a lookup in our conditional distribution and look for uh, an error seen uh, and we sample uh, an error candidate. Um, so that is how we model the noise and that is how we inject transcription errors. Finally, we had to do these uh, topic models. And uh, basically the way we did this is that we just uh, create an LDA model on an external multi-domain text corpus. Uh, in our case, it's Wikidata in Danish. Um, and we tune these uh, topic models on, on, this, um, on this Wikidata set. And then what we can do is with this uh, model, we can take any uh, document D and input it to the LDA model, we can obtain some uh, topic distribution of this document. Um, and then the second question then becomes, how do we make uh, evaluate the topic distributions we obtain on the transcripts? How do we evaluate the quality of them? Um, and the way we chose to do that is that for each podcast episode that we have, there is an accompanying description written by the podcast uh, creator. And um, we treat these what we've done is we've very carefully selected podcasts that have good creative descriptions 
Um, so what you can actually see here is that you have a description and the first paragraph up here is a general description for the whole podcast show. But then you, what you will see in the second part of the description is that um, there is a specific description for this episode also. And then we obtain the topic distribution for this description and we treat this as the true topic distribution. And then basically the, the, the evaluation metric then becomes simply a cosine similarity between the transcripts, topic distribution, and the topic distribution of the description. Um, yeah. So the experimental setup and how we actually tested the level that we were we, of uh, ASR technology required or the how uh, robust topic models actually are to these eras is that we have uh, we had 600 uh, podcast episodes in Danish from Podimo and we generate these baseline transcripts using Dan speech on these and then we evaluate the quality of the topic distribution as I mentioned before by doing a cosine similarity between the uh, description and the baseline transcript. So here D1 is the baseline transcript and D2 is the description um, for the same episode. And then what we do is we slowly increase this beta value, which is a noise rate, and we um, inject noise into the transcript in a stochastic way. And then we calculate the similarity for increasingly corrupt transcripts. So that's what we tried to note down here. So basically you have this transcript here with beta value of zero. This is of course just a snippet of it but then you do the similarity between the descriptions. Then we have some new one with a better value of 0 0.3, and we do the similarity scoring between that and the description also. Um, and then finally, what we also do is we do, uh, we also do topic distribution similarity between the baseline transcript and later corrupted transcript, just because to sort of a sanity check to see that injecting noise um, into the transcripts should uh, make them diverge for the original uh, uh, topic distributions. So basically what you will see in our results here, so what we have on the left here is the cosine similarity scores as a function of beta um, between, and it's the cosine similarity between the descriptions and uh, the podcast descriptions and the, the ASR transcripts with varying levels of noise. And then on the right here, you see the, the cosine similarity scores as a function of beta uh, between the, the original sort of the baseline transcript and the later noisy transcripts. And that's why we started a cosine similarity of one. Um, but interestingly enough, so what we actually saw is that, so in the uniform random uh, noise case, we see this very quick decline in cosine similarity as we increase the, the, the beta value. So as we get more and more noisy transcript with this kind of random noise, we very quickly see that the topic distributions are completely ruined. Um, but what we noticed is that when we did the same thing, but with the not with the modeled noise, um, uh, which is based on the ASR system, and we even increase the rate of these. So say that every single word technically is transcribed incorrectly, but within the boundaries of the ASR technologies uh, capabilities we actually see that the, the cosine similarity does not increase very much at all. Um, so it does increase somewhat, but, but, but not uh, to an alarming rate. So basically um, what we actually concluded on this is that ASR technology for uh, podcast uh, topic distributions, like obtaining transcripts to do topic distributions on, is actually does not actually have to be, um, the word error rate does not have to be perfect on an average case. And when we investigated the errors we got uh, in the in the transcriptions, we noticed that this is typically because the 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 errors that is made by an ASR, the sort of the ASR system that we had at least, they have semantically typically the same meaning as um, the correct word, shall we so to say. Um, and that's why we believe that that, that we see this uh, these results. Um, Finally, I also just have this at the bottom here, just to highlight, we, we sort of uh, split the podcast into deciles um, to see, uh, well, actually I can see I'm running over time. So perhaps we should just go on to questions and uh, if there are no questions, I can cover this also. But um, yeah, please let me know. Uh, like, do you use uh, many models or do you use a single model? For the topic distributions? 
no the earlier system that you that alvin year uh, that you use for like, ah this one yes yeah so this is this is a single system this is like an asr engine or model um that has been created by uh by uh, alvin year um so it's 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 a combination of different models um so you have both some with uh models going on here and then you have some other kind of uh was well, not really models, but uh, algorithms going on in the back also. So it's a, so it's like a hybrid system. Um, and there's also in the voice activity. There's also some other things going on. So it's so it's a connection of things. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a stack uh, or a ensemble? Uh, I am not actually entirely sure. So this is Avenir's technology. I know the 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 sort of the the overhead uh, of it. So I know what you see here. Um, but the deep into the boxes, each of them, I'm actually not an expert in. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm not really able to answer that question. Well, thank. You. Uh, Nickel. Yes. If, if I might. Um, it's a uh, great talk. I think it addresses some of the questions we all have about how usable these these transcripts are for the the kind of work that that uh, that we're all involved in here. Yeah. Um, what one of the things that uh, occurs to me is that the vocabulary models uh, in the audiobook transcripts that you used to create the the noise models might not match up with the sort of keywords that are important yes. for the topic modeling. I'm wondering if you did any sort of feature comparisons there to see whether the vocabulary that's that's interesting uh, really overlaps in the way that uh, that you're assuming. I, yeah, I, I, I think using the books was a was a fantastic idea, and it's uh, and I'm just wondering how close it comes to the to the actual material. Yeah. So I think it's actually uh, like absolutely uh, like a, 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 a con well I don't know if concern but it's an interesting thing to to uh, to uh, investigate and actually we we did not really check how uh, as you say like keywords specifically but we did check the the rate of overlap right um, at least uh, and and in the audio books I believe we have the vocabulary that comes from there um, I think there is uh, so basically there's 20% of the words, which is quite high, well, actually, sorry, 10% of the words that occur in the podcast never occur in the audiobooks. So that's actually quite a high rate, right? So that will mean, and in those cases, what we do when we do the corrupting is that we delete the words from the transcriptions. So basically, the assumption there is that when we look up in this conditional distribution, right, when we look up a word, and it hasn't occurred in the like basically it doesn't exist in the conditional distribution then we assume that the sort of the idea is that the asr technology would not be able to transcribe transcribe it right so it miss out on it completely um and that is a missing like point so a more extensive corpus that we have made these uh like this conditional distribution so would absolutely help this uh like uh, make it better, make it more robust, robust, basically, I think. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Uh, it does uh, to quite well. I, I had a, 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 an idea. Do you have access to the, um, are you running the ASR system yourself or was that done sort of out of bounds? Um, uh, uh, so, I, so I do have access to it, yes. So I mean, another way to do this would be uh, to uh, uh, permute the coefficients in the beam search yeah. uh, or to corrupt them directly there and just uh, essentially yeah, use yeah, direct yeah. noise in the recognition? Yes, that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good point, actually. Um, so you could do that. I think that, I mean, what, what makes it more difficult is it makes the corruption process more of like an online thing where here we obtain, so I obtained the baseline transcripts offline, right? And then they got shipped to me um, the the baseline transcripts, and then I corrupted them uh, like on my own and in a stochastic way uh, afterwards, right? But I absolutely think that's a very good uh, very good point. Um, Great, thanks so much. Cool. Thank you, Rosie. I, I saw you have a hand raised, but we are yeah. If you have a quick question. Oh, yeah, my quick question um, uh, is, uh, and you you report your results are very interesting on how the distribution um, is not so dissimilar from the original distribution. Um, I'm just wondering if you 
are planning to have already tested this in the end-to-end -end task that you're really interested in? No, so in, so in our case, um, so I sort of sit in between the chairs here. So Avenir, someone I work with, and Potomo is someone I work with, um, and I'm employed at DTU. Um, so so it, it's not something they've employed currently, but part of the, so to put it short, um, Avenir was interested in showing how their transcriptions can actually be used in a recommendation setting. And so this was sort of a preliminary research to show Podomo that they can use this for topic distributions. So whether or not they're willing to pick up on actually doing that or not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, well, actually, I think they're interested in it, but whether they choose to prioritize this or not, I'm not, they haven't so far, basically. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much for the questions. Great. Um... Yeah, I think we should uh, move on to the last presentation given time here. And, and thanks, Miguel, for the great presentation.